my distinct honor this evening to please welcome President Donald J. Trump. That's a good group of people. It's, uh, it's really an honor to have you at Mar-a-Lago. They said maybe we'd have 35 or 40 people, and we have a little bit more than that. Thank you very much for being here. But we have, uh, you know, they wanted to use the place. So they said, Janine, how did this happen? How did this happen? This place is packed. We love everything you stand for. Very, very special. And we don't let people use Mar-a-Lago very much. And uh, because, you know, as you know, we hold very, very important documents in Mar-a-Lago. <laughs> and they're yeah, very baby. secure. And they're very secure with yeah, Secret Service are. all over and locked doors. But they are very, unlike uh, somebody else that keeps them on a garage floor under a Corvette. And in Chinatown. And in Chinatown. How about that? But I want to thank, you know, I have some uh, very special friends with us tonight, and it's uh, just uh, an incredible evening, and the uh, weather is perfect. It's not hot, it's not cold, it's like perfect. And uh, Johnny Morris, as you know, from Bass Pro Shops is a very, very special man. All I know is that uh, Ted Virtue and my sons called up, oh, you got to say hello to Johnny. They like this, you know, they like the fishing and all that. And they said, you got to treat him great. I said, of course I'm going to treat him great. I know who he is. He's big and he's great. And Johnny has uh, been a tremendous supporter of uh, what we're all here for tonight. So I want to thank Johnny, wherever you may be. And uh, thank you. And Mrs. Morris, thank you very much. There they are. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Linda McMahon is incredible. She just closed a little deal. Linda is special. I've known her. I, I won't say how long I've known Linda. Too long, right, Linda? We've known each other for a long time, but she's a very, very special uh, person. Uh, Lee and Denise Rizzuto. Where are you? Where are you? These, uh, they have a thing called Conair. And whenever I need a hairdryer, I'll call them up. I'll say, can you send me a hairdryer? And they'll send me like 50. I would get 50. I don't know what to do with them. They're all over the place. They want to make sure that I get the one I like. So they send me every one that they've ever made. But they're great friends of mine, and they have been for a long time. Members of Mar-a-Lago, they have been for a long time. We have a lot of people up there eating. Oh, look at them. There they are. They're watching. They say, what the hell's going on down here? <laughs> See, you don't pay. They have to pay. That's You have a much better thing. And uh, a very, very special person in my life because I've known her for a long time and she's always been with me. She's just uh, an incredible woman. Janine Pirro, you know, she was a... She was a very, she was a very special uh, district attorney. She was very uh, strong, and but fair. You know, we have people now that aren't too fair. It's called get Trump, we're gonna get Trump, I don't care. We have people campaigning, I will get Trump, knowing nothing about I will get Trump, we're going to get him. Janine's a little different. She's tougher, if you want to know the truth, but she's also fair. That's what you want. We want fairness, but thank you very much, Janine. And she's a big reason. She's a big reason why The Five is so successful. She really is. She's done a fantastic job, and she's very special. Uh, two other people that I have to say, Pete Hexeth, he would call me. He would call me and he said, you got to do me a favor. There's some warriors that haven't been treated. You know, they treat you not so good in a woke military. I don't know if you know that. Don't want to start any problems, but I think you've been hearing about this. And Pete Hegseth would call me and he said, you know, there are 12 guys and they're great people and they're wonderful. And it would be great if you could let them out of prison because they teach them how to fight. They teach them, frankly, how to kill. They teach them how to be warriors. And then the warriors, and they get arrested for 25 years. They want them in jail. And Pete would call me often. Where's Pete? Where is he? What a great guy. Pete. 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 There he is. Pete. Hi, Pete. But we, we would. Uh, so what I do is I let him out. I took a lot of heat. 
<laughs> but, you know, we did the right thing. We let a lot of people have their freedom. They teach you how to be a warrior, and then they put you in jail when you are a warrior. It's uh, pretty sad. Another person we have who's really done an incredible job on Fox is Joey Jones. And Joey's here someplace. And Joey, thank you very much. Thank you very much for being with us. You've done really an incredible job. So I just want to say our military is great. It's not going to change. We have um, we've had a very interesting time with the military. You know, we took out ISIS. We defeated ISIS. It was supposed to take four years. And uh, that's right. We, we kicked ass. We did. We did. General Raisin Kane, right? You know that. Does anybody know that story about General Raisin Kane? Should I tell that story, Janine? I don't know. So I had from some of our television generals, you know, these are generals that are on television a lot, but they're not very good generals. And I said, what's taking so long with, uh, why can't we win against ISIS? We have these great planes. And I rebuilt the entire military and created Space Force, so we're very happy. But I said, why can't we defeat ISIS? Then they said, sir, it will take four years, maybe five years, maybe you won't be able to do it. I said, wait a minute. These people, they fight with knives and obsolete rifles, and we have planes that cost $150 million. I know because I bought a lot of them. We have all brand new stuff. We had, we had fighter jets that were 48 years old. I said, so we have all this stuff and we can't defeat them. So I said, I want to go to Iraq. I want to find out what we're doing. And it was a very uh, secret mission. Nobody knew I was going. I left late at night. They took me to the airport under very strong disguise. And we got onto Air Force One, and we flew out at 3 o'clock in the morning, and we headed to Iraq. Long flight. And when we were about an hour out, they came to see me. They said, sir, uh, we have a little problem. There's been some problems in the area, like shooting at airplanes. This did not make me feel good. Air Force One is wonderful, but it is 32 years old. You know, I bought two new ones, and we saved about $1.7 billion. They were going to pay $5.8 billion, and I said, that's too much, and we went through a whole process. I got the same exact plane. It's actually two planes, as you know. It's two. Air Force One's actually two planes. We got the same exact for $3 billion. Can you believe this? $3 billion. $999 million. Nine, 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 nine. One penny left. As you said... It was 5.7 billion. The head of Boeing came to see me. He said, uh, sir, we have to sign these. I said, what is it? It's a contract, the general said. I said, uh, how much is it for the planes? They said, sir, it's $5.7 billion. That sounds like a lot for a plane. I've never heard of a plane. He said, there are two planes. I said, who made the deal, Obama? I said, well, then it's too high, automatically. <laughs> No, I, automatically, I said, it's too high. I'm not going to do it, General. So the head of Boeing, Dennis, came. This is before they had the tragedy. The two planes went down. The 737 MAX. I said, change the name of that plane. <laughs> but they didn't do that either. But, you know, came in to see Dennis. He was a nice guy. He was a star until this that happened. But this was before it happened. And I said, uh, your planes are too expensive. He said, sir, this is the best we can do. I said, that's OK. I'm canceling the order. And they said, uh, let me ask you this to the general. Do we have the right to cancel? Yes, sir, we can cancel. You, what, do you have a cancellation clause? Yeah, no cost, right? No, sir, I made a great deal. What is it? We have to pay $250 million to cancel. And that's not a good deal. So I said, don't cancel. Just say we're not going to buy them, okay? Don't cancel, because I don't want to give them 250 for the Can you believe it? He thought it was a wonderful deal. Anyway, just to make it short, and then we have to get back to our Iraq situation. What happened is he came in and I said, nope, got to be, you got to have a three on it, meaning I got to be in the threes. And he said, can't do it, sir. We'll take off 500 million. I said, that's pretty good in about two minutes, Janine, right? They're going to take off 500 million. My son, my great son over here, Eric. Eric. And he's a tall one. He's 6'5 or 6'6. Six, six. I got a 6'9 one that's 17 inside. So he's, he's pretty, uh, he, he will bring him out. He won't, have, he won't have any problem seeing. So I said, it's got to have a three. He said, 500, we'll take five. That's all we're going to do. We'll get it down to 4.2 billion. I said, no, no, you got to have, you got to get it down. I got to have a three on the front. So he said, no, we can't do it. So we have it now down from 5.7 to 
a four point, I guess we had it down to about 5.2. So we saved 500. Now what we have to do further? I said, nope, got to have a three. I kept driving the guy crazy. This went on for about two months. And every time I called, I'd save about 300 million for the exact same plan. And then I forgot about it. I gave up. I said, we're never going to make a deal with this guy. And uh, about two months later, he calls. He said, sir, we got to make a deal on the, on the plan. I said, give me a price. He said, the three million, three billion, nine, nine, nine. And we saved one point seven billion dollars in a period of three months. And you can do that with everything. But let's not, let's get back onto the other subject. So we're we get on the plane and we head out and they come to see me and they say, sir, uh, we'll have to close all our windows, turn off all the lights and you can't have any light in the plane. I said, well, we're flying over enemy territory. And I said, that's not good. Nobody told me about this. And we started looking into the Congressional Medal of Honor for me. I felt extremely brave. I didn't have much of a choice. So we turned off the lights. They turned down the shades. They turned off all the lights on the outside of the plane. And you know, the greatest pilots, they fly Air Force One and the helicopters and the whole thing. They're really very special people. And I said, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the captain which is upstairs, it's a 747. I'm gonna go upstairs and I'm feeling my way up and I have people grabbing me and pushing me. I can't see, everything is absolutely dark. And I make my way into the captain's quarters. And I say, and I think this is an important story for you because you care so much about the military. And our military is great, it's great. No, it's great. So I make my way into the captain's quarters and I see the pilot and the co-pilot and everybody was so handsome. These people were better looking than Tom Cruise and stronger. And the captain looks back to me, sir, it's a privilege to have you on board. Thank you, captain. They're very nice. And he's got the perfect flat top, the crew cut, everything, central casting. You, there's nobody in Hollywood that looks as good as this guy, believe me. They don't even come close. So what happens is we're about ready to land. And if you know anything about a plane, they go 1,000 900, you know, 1,000 feet. And it's a computer voice, but it's a voice that sounds great. So they go, oh, there it is. That's Air Force One. <laughs> or the enemy. I'm more, I'm more concerned with the enemy. You, you never know what's going to happen, right? But I say to him, let me ask you this question. Uh, what's that sound have, sir? We're 1,000 feet up. So it goes 1,000. Then it goes 900. It's a computer voice, but it sounds so beautiful. Except when you're in a plane and we're 900 and there's not a light down. And I know what it looks like because I land and I like to fly in with the captains. Then I hear 800, 700, 600, 500, 400. By the way, Biden couldn't do that. You know? <laughs> Can't do a lot of things. 300, now 300 feet in this massive plane flying in. There's no lights. There's no runway. There's no anything. And I say to the captain, Captain, are we okay? I'm getting a little bit nervous. Yes, sir, no problem, sir. We'll be landing in just a few minutes. Oh, great. There's no, there's no, Captain, I don't see a runway. Normally you see a runway when you're sitting. Sir, we're okay, sir. We're going to land in just a few minutes. So it goes 200, 100, Captain, are you sure we're okay? And he goes, no problem, sir. Then you go, boom, boom, boom. We land. And I said to my staff, I mentioned it, I said to my staff, please check on whether or not it's possible for great bravery for the President of the United States to give himself the Congressional Medal of Honor. Because I think I displayed tremendous, tremendous hexen. I think I displayed tremendous bravery. So anyway, so I, I get off the plane and I'm looking down, I'm way up high, because unfortunately, you know, I didn't like using the children's stairs, you know? You gotta be able to walk down the stairs, not the children. We have them, we call them the children's stairs. It's meant for children or hurricanes. If you have a hurricane, you use them. Now we're using them every day. It doesn't look very good when you get off the bottom of a plane. You get off right by the front wheel. It's not too good. But I look down and I see these generals. Again, they're all handsome and central casting. They look like they come out of Hollywood. They're standing at attention. Two generals, a colonel, a drill sergeant, a staff sergeant, but they were like perfect human beings. They were perfect. And I go down and I said, uh, what's your name? My name is Kane, sir. General Kane. 
I said, oh, that's nice. What's your first name? Raisin. I said, wait a minute, tell me. You mean your name is Raisin Cane? I love you. This is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a guy named Raisin Cane. Why do they call you that? I don't know, sir, but I think because I give him hell. And I said, I love that name. You're the guy. And then I say hello to another general. I say hello to the colonel. I say hello to the group. Sir, would you like to rest? Now, if I would have known Biden at the time, I said, I'm not Biden, but he's, you know, waiting. He's waiting, waiting for a rigged election to get him in. So what happens? So what happens? <laughs> it's absolutely true. It's in case anybody has absolutely. So what happens is they say, would you like to rest up? I said, no, I don't have to rest. I just got off a 20 hour flight. Let's go. So we go into this quarters and it's a bunker. It's a massive bunker. The biggest, uh, I think the biggest runway anywhere in the world. The strongest runway, I think eight, it's eight feet deep in concrete and it's 10,000 feet long. That's a big runway and uh, meant for the biggest cargo planes, the biggest planes anywhere in the world. And I said, this is quite a place. And so we go into this tremendous bunker and we're inside a, a boardroom and we have a whole lot of military people there all looking good, all looking sharp. General Raisin Kane is the, uh, the main guy, Daniel Kane. And he goes, uh, he goes, uh, thank you for coming, sir. It's an honor. I said, let me ask you, General Kane, let me ask you a question. Why can't we defeat ISIS? We should be able to defeat them with the best equipment anywhere in the world. I got you all new equipment, General. Why can't we defeat them? You can, sir. Now, I was told it would take four to five years. And then there's a question as to whether or not you could do it. I said, General, how long would it take to defeat ISIS? Please tell me. So we can have it done in four weeks and you'll have time left over. I said, four weeks. I was told five years. I was told it takes five years to defeat ISIS. So I said, General, uh, are you sure you know what you're talking about? Yeah, why? Why Why do they say five years or why do you say four weeks? Well, sir, by this time, some of the, I fired a lot of the guys in Washington, I hate to tell you. I, I said, give me a letter. I'm never going to do that again. I'm just going to fire people. I'm not going to say, give me a letter. And then they say, I quit. I don't want to do that anymore. From now on, we fire them. You understand that, right? From now on, we fire them. They're, they're no good. And by the way, why they didn't fire guys who did that horrible job, that retort, uh, the retreat, the surrender in Afghanistan. Nobody got fired. Can you imagine? That's the most embarrassing moment in the history of our country. Not that we got out. We should have gotten out. I was the one that got it down to 2,500 troops. But we should have kept Bagram. We should have left from Bagram. And we should have taken our soldiers out last, not first. It was a disaster. Anyway, most embarrassing. And no, nobody got fired. You know, in the old days, you get fired. If you lose, if you lose a war, you get fired. Nobody got fired. Not even, they never even thought about it. So I said to the general, how come we aren't, uh, how come we aren't beating them? Because their plan was not good, sir, but that's not for me to say. They come from Washington, D.C., and they tell us what to do. But don't you tell them it's not good? No, sir. As military, it's really not our job to say it's not good. I'm not sure I like this concept, by the way. How are you? I'm not sure you're looking good. I'm not sure that I like this concept, but I understand the concept very well. So you wouldn't tell them that you disagree? No, sir. When they come in, they're higher rank. And they tell us what to do. But did you disagree with them? Yes, I do. I said, what would you do different? Well, sir, they told us we had to leave from this base. And this base is very, very far away. And by the time we got to the enemy, we'd have to turn back to refuel. So we'd go there. We'd be fighting very, very little time. And, sir, we have a lot of what we call port portable bases out in the desert. We have nine of them, sir. And if we would use this base to stock them, but use... These portable bases, sir, we could hit them from the left. We could hit them from the right. We could hit them from underneath and from on top. And, sir, would knock the shit out of them, and they will be surrendering very quickly. So I said, uh, how sure are you of this? Because this is good news. I made the trip to find out. I didn't expect that. And they said, 100% uh, certain, sir. I'm, I'm telling you, sir, you have time left over. So I went through the whole thing with the other gentlemen, including even the sergeants, and they all agreed with them 100 percent. Use all of these bases that we have, portable bases, uh, non-stationary bases, and we use them. 
I said, let me call you, General. I'll call you back. And I called him on Monday. I said, go ahead with it, General. You sure you can do it? Yes, sir. I'm sure. 100%. Thank you, Raisin. Raisin Kane. Let's see if you can raise Kane. So uh, he beat the hell out of him. He went after him, and he really went after him. And I get a call in three weeks, and he said, sir, we're ready. I said, ready for what? He said, most of them are gone, but we have a number, a large number, I won't tell you how many, and we have to do something about it. We have to do something about it now, sir. What? Just give the order. I said, wait a minute. You know, I never did this before. I said, is there something that we can do? Is there anything that we can do to maybe save them, make them prisoners, let them give up, let them wave the white flag? Her, sir, they don't know what a white flag is. They don't, sir, they're not going to give up. They never give up, sir. I said, but these are human beings. No, sir, they're animals. These are animals. I said, wow, that's tough stuff. I said, uh, here's what you do. Take those beautiful F-16s and other planes and fly over them for a little while. Maybe they will retreat. Maybe they will. You don't have to kill so many people. He said, if you want us to do that, sir, but I'll tell you, there's not going to be any retreat. It won't happen. I said, give it a shot. So they spent two days flying back and forth, flying all over. I said, how's it going? Not good, sir. We're wasting a lot of fuel. I said, all right, General, you do the job. And ISIS was 100% defeated. How about that? 100%. And I tell that story. I don't tell it often because it's a complex story. But I tell that story because you have everybody here is essentially related to the military. We all respect the military. Some of us help the military. We give a lot of money to the military. We love the military. We have the greatest military in the world, and that proved it. We knocked out ISIS. And we were told by people that didn't know what the hell they were doing that this was going to take four to five years, and we didn't know whether or not it could be done. And a man in the desert knocked him out in three weeks. He was right. He left a week, and I made him take a couple of days extra. But he knocked him out, and we defeated ISIS. We have the greatest fighters in the world. We have the greatest military in the world. And now we have the greatest equipment in the world because I bought it. I bought it. We have totally rebuilt our military. And our military is, and our military, thank you, darling. Our military is amazing, and they're amazing people. And I just met some really incredible heroes. In fact, so much so, I respect them as much as I respect anybody in the world. And I know people that you're supposed to respect, heads of countries, I respect these people actually more. And I sent down for a whole pile of the most beautiful hats and medals and everything else. I said, get me everything because we're going to get them to the guys. They said, sir, do you think I can get a hat? You can get as many hats as you want. But we're, uh, we're going to stock you up. You're going to go home. Your pockets are going to be full. But I just want to say, we have the greatest military in the world. We don't have the greatest leaders at that top level, like Billy and Mattis and different people. And Mark Jesper. I call him Jesper because he said yes to everything. We don't have great leaders. But what we do have, we have the greatest military. And we have great generals, like General Raisin Kane. General Raisin Kane, if they would have let him do his thing, you wouldn't have been fighting for years and years and lost a lot of lives. You would have had this thing done many years ago. And I learned a lesson, but it was a great trip. When I made that trip, it was a great trip because it showed me something. And when I do tell this story, people are just so happy because I'd only tell it to people that truly love our military, respect our military, and want to respect our military. And we have the greatest military in the world. So thank you. On behalf of Eric and Laura and the Trump